Hello there, thanks for joining me today. This is part three in a three-part video series I'm doing to complete a sea glass mosaic on this antique window. So in part one, I showed you how I made the bridge and the water underneath the bridge, and I also talked about six lessons that I've learned in creating sea glass mosaic art. Basically, things I've learned from my mistakes. And if you missed that one, you can click on the link and watch that video. And then part two, I showed you down here the bottom part of the sea glass mosaic, all different treasures that I used and gave you some insight into how you can really use your beach treasures to add a lot of interest and to really feature some of those special finds. And if you missed that video, you can click on the link and watch that one. So in this video today, I'm going to show you how to make a dynamic sky. So first I'll show you 10 video or 10 mosaics that I've done and I'll show you the skies and give you some ideas of different ways you can make your skies really interesting and dynamic and then you can watch me complete this sky and then I'll have this mosaic finished. So the first time I made this bridge, you can see how I made all these flowing lines with white and aqua sea glass. And I made some little blue specks there in the sky and that beautiful blue heron off in the right hand side. So this is a big sky behind the lighthouse and I used some white pottery pieces to create some really poofy interesting white clouds. So you can see quite a bit of sky behind this boat that's floating on the water. And in the sky there's a white milk glass sun and some blue birds and lots of flowing lines with white and aqua sea glass. And in this one you see the sky behind the house. And again I've got flowing lines coming from a sun and some blue birds flying in the sky. Fairly similar theme to a few of my other skies. So the birds in this sky are a little bit different. I used some really choice pieces of blue to create these three large blue herons. So this sky features a setting sun instead of a sun way up in the sky. And then again, I've got all those flowing lines of white and aqua sea glass, a few more features too, a few flowers in the sky, which is kind of fanciful, and also a few brown seagulls. So this sky has a really cool milk glass sun and then I've used some pottery pieces to make those lines through the sky and then the blue lines and a blue bird. And you also see the heron and the anukshuks in the foreground on this one. And this sky features a few more of those great big puffy clouds made with white pottery pieces. And then there's a kite with a tail behind it, which is also something a little bit different. Always looking to make something a bit different. Now in this piece you'll notice straight lines of sea glass coming from the lighthouse. So those are rays of light instead of flowing lines in the sky. And there's also a really interesting large bird there. And you'll see that the sun is setting in this one as well. And in this sky I only used white sea glass. I was just being a little bit different here. So my goal was to make the lines going very swirly and quite a little bit of movement in the sky there without using any other colors except white. So I have quite a bit of sea glass sitting on my window here. And these are all pieces that I'd really like to incorporate into my sky. I have three birds over here that I know I'm going to put in so I'll just glue those on as I get there because what I'm hoping to do with this guy is to make some wavy lines that really feature a lot of this aqua sea glass. I've got a few colored pieces that I have to decide if they're going to fit in here somewhere and I have this half of a bottle bottom it's actually a fairly small one, but I'm going to put that right there as the sun. And then I'll arrange my sea glass to try to make waves of sea glass going through the sky. So it gives you some feeling, kind of like the waves of uh, the rays of sun as they shine 
from the sky. And what I'll probably do is start with the larger pieces towards the sun and then they'll get smaller as I go out from the sun, just to add some more interest. So I think this is working quite well. 
to make the sky quite dynamic. I have all these flowing lines of aqua and flowing lines of white and by varying the size of the sea glass I have some fairly large pieces of sea glass and some fairly small pieces of sea glass and what happens when you're working with the sky you don't have to have your sea glass pieces smaller in the in the in a way and larger in the foreground in order to create distance because the sky is basically fairly dynamic in in size with all the different clouds and the different the different formations that you see as you look up into the sky so you can basically get away with using whatever you want and to use whatever colors you want because depending on the day the light in the sky can look quite different I tend to use a lot of white because it makes the sky lighter but I find with using even some greens and blues in here it really adds a lot of interest to the sky so I hope you found this three-part video series interesting and it really gave you some good ideas of things that you can try with your sea glass art. I just wanted to zoom in here so you can get a close look at some of the details like the fish houses and all the details in the water and the sand and that sandbar. The flower and the anukshuk and the lighthouse and the rocks at the bottom sailboats, birds, lots of detail in the sky and the bridge and the one little sailboat out in the water there. So I hope this was really helpful for you and you had fun coming along on this ride with me and I hope it gives you some great inspiration for your own sea glass mosaic art. So until next time, I hope you make it to the beach and that you have some wonderful luck finding some sea glass.